I was at the California Science Teachers Association in 1994, and I had lunch with Glenn Seaborg. If you've ever heard of Glenn Seaborg, atomic number, uh, atomic element number 168 is now called Seaborgium. You were talking about Seaborgium and element 168? The periodic table was only up to 118. My name is Robbie Kyle, and I think not only are you a science guy, but you're a really cool guy. You know, I grew up watching your show. Hi, Bill Nye. Um, my name's Aries Loomis. Um, a lot of my brothers kind of pushed me down for uh, being nerdy and, and liking science, and getting to grow up and watch your TV show um, really helped me believe that science was cool, uh, and it really meant a lot to me. I had lunch with Glenn Seaborg, one of the guys that created plutonium. And he says, Bill, uh, Bill, they wanted me to call it plutonium. But come on, plutonium, that sounds a lot cooler. <laughs> yeah, Glenn, yeah, it does. And then he told me they wanted, by long tradition, they wanted the atomic symbol to be PT uh, uh, for plutonium. But he insisted, Glenn Steborg told me this to my face, it's hearsay when you hear it. To my face is how we talk in junior high. To my face. <laughs> he said, I insisted that the atomic symbol be PU because this stuff stinks. That might not have anything to do with the qualities of plutonium as much as the fact that the symbol for PT was taken a long time before by platinum. PT has already been taken up by platinum, so that doesn't really make sense. And the fact that Glenn Seaborg would say that is surprising to me. It's, it's a little disheartening to hear that uh, some of the things you've said about nuclear science and technology. There's going to be another accident. There just will be, because it's humans. It's not, it's not um, uh, this idealized bunch of people running the things. There will be another accident. So we just have to say to ourselves, is that worth the risk. Can we manage the risks? And this is where I want you, as voters and taxpayers, to kind of figure that out. The World Health Organization has concluded fossil fuel air pollution kills more than three and a half million people per year. That's 10,000 people per day. 10,000 people is more than have been killed by nuclear power in the history of the planet, you know, so we have, to, we have to be objective in comparing the environmental impacts of uh, different energy sources. We have to phase out carbon emissions at a rate of several percent a year. I don't see any way we can do that without the help of nuclear power. Nuclear power is essentially carbon-free energy. We need to utilize all of our options. Using rhetoric to uh, put something down when we have science telling us otherwise is, uh, isn't the best road of action.